Today I'm going to start a series on category theory for programmers. I'm not going to spend a long time on why you might want to learn category theory. I'll just assume that you do. Um, I'll be using JavaScript to teach it, since if you can see this video, you clearly have a web browser, and every web browser has a built-in JavaScript interpreter. I'm using jsfiddle.net um, to do my code demonstrations here, but you could use Square Free Shell or the built-in console in Chrome or Safari. You can download um, Firebug if you're using Firefox. Lots of different options. Um, we're going to start today with the concept of a contract. This is a simple contract. Function that expects something that is ostensibly a string. If it's not a string, then we're going to throw type error. Otherwise, just return the string itself. So what's this good for? Well, um, say I want to duplicate a string. So Do that, run this, oops, um, heat five. Clearly, there's a bug here. Run this, we get ten. That is not five five. Repeated. What we want to do is make sure that s is a string before using the concatenate operator. So we say s equals string of s. Now if we run this thing, we get an exception. Hey, expected a string. Right now I've got it breaking on exceptions, but back here to the console. Hey, I expected a string. On the other hand, if we put the string 5 and run it, then we get what we expected, 5-5. Five, five. Um, that was kind of a contrived example, but a more serious example is when you're talking about the z-index of a div. So the z-index is a number, but it is stored as a string. So if we have something like the z-index is 5, if I want to increment the z-index, I have to be careful not to say this. Because this is going to simply tack a 1 onto the end. If I try and increment it by 2, this will go from 5 to 511. Right there, 511, uh, which is not what I wanted to do. So having contracts helps us check the type of things before we work on them and they fail in strange and mysterious ways. 